it's incredibly frustrating for me when people keep calling it the Brexit election. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you think about what's the worst things that the British state is doing right now. The worst is climate change, and it's almost in a different category altogether. Not dealing with climate change is just a death sentence for, for you know, for millions. And Britain's role well in that is important. We can talk about that in a minute, perhaps. Um, the second one is Yemen. So when you look at what's happening in Yemen, Saudi-led intervention in the Yemeni civil war in 2015, now been going on for four and a half years. That war, in terms of the Saudi intervention, it's largely aerial bombing from the Saudi point of view. And half the Saudi air force is made up of British jets, British supplied fighter jets, sold. Um, most of the ones that have been used now are sold by New Labour, well done New Labour. And that deal was actually signed by the great humanitarian Gordon Brown. Well, those that fleet of jets is now pulverising Yemeni civilians, and has been for the past four and a half years, and well documented by the, you know, some people will be familiar with this, but I think it's worth saying, because we don't yeah, ever yeah. talk about it, for people who, who don't know. Um, well documented by Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, the UN, Save the Children, Oxfam, you can read all the reports, there's no, you know, debate about this. Saudis have been hitting schools, hitting hospitals, hitting clinics, when they've been given the coordinates, don't bomb this cl clinic please, here are the coordinates, they'll bomb it twice, they'll bomb it once, then they'll wait for the first responders to come and they'll hit it again, so it's quite deliberate. Um, hitting all, all kinds of civilian infrastructure, targeting civilian infrastructure as far as I can make out, they'll deny it, the British government will deny it, but it seems clear to me that's what they're doing. Imposing a blockade on Yemen, so they've killed like, I mean, they killed thousands of people for indiscriminate bombing. The largest cause of violent death in the war is Saudi bombing. And yeah, just to, just to focus on the bombing before going on to the blockade, those planes don't fly that British support. Because what the deal is, we sell them the jets, and in the contract there's a commitment to carry on providing whenever they need it, the bombs, the missiles, the components, the training for the pilots, the maintenance. There's British crews on the ground keeping the planes in the sky. Those planes don't fly. Those bombs and missiles don't fall without British support and American support for that component of the Saudi Air Force. It's American. But the British side, the British component of the Saudi Air Force is big. I know, like, you know, we're, we're a much smaller power compared to the Americans. But British fighter jets make up a big proportion of the Saudi Air Force to the point where some people involved have said anonymously to um, Channel 4 News when they did a dispatches documentary about this it wouldn't just, if the British withdrew support for the Saudi bombing, it wouldn't just ground the British supplied jets which would be huge, they'd struggle to fight the war full stop mm. because the British jets are so important so the British state is acting as an accessory to mass murder, to indiscriminate bombing which has killed thousands of civilians, the you know, they dropped a laser-guided bomb on a school bus in August 2018, killing 40 primary school-aged boys. The British government is an accessory to this campaign of mass murder and has been for four and a half years, in addition to which the Saudis and the UAE are imposing a blockade on the region's poorest country. And you know what happens when you impose a blockade on the region's poorest country, which is import-dependent. What happens is people start dying in large numbers due to the humanitarian crisis that's been created. So 85,000 infant children, forget about the casualties in children above the age of five and adults, just infant children, 85,000 infant children dead of starvation or preventable disease as a result of a man-made humanitarian catastrophe in which the leading culprit is our ally doing this with our help. Really, really serious. And in terms of the election campaign, you have a very straightforward choice between a Conservative Party, which has been enabling this for four and a half years, and which, which is in government an accessory to mass murder, just a straight, it's not rhetoric, it's not, you know, it's just a straightforward statement of fact, and a Labour government, and a potential Labour government which is committed to withdrawing that support, which would ground half the Saudi Air Force at a stroke and undermine their ability to fight that war, which would literally save lives from day one. You know, it would stop aerial bombing within, four, within a week and a half, apparently. So that's a huge, huge, um, that's, that's a huge dividing line, you know. If, you, if people want to boil the election down to one issue, I mean, boil it down to climate change, but if you want to boil it down to two issues, boil it down to that, then boil it down to, I mean, Brexit's important, mm. but come on, is Yemen less important? 85,000 infant children less important?